Welcome to the spring yoga practice. My name's Atim. This is a strengthening and energizing flow inspired by birds, bees, butterflies, sunshine, sun salutation. We'll start us up, greeting the sun to warm us up. Keep the breath in and out of the nose through the practice. And then come to nearly the front of your mat, starting in mountain pose. Posture awareness, arms up, upward salute. Thigh squeeze to protect the back as you gently lean back and then forward fold. Knees can bend to protect the back this time. Halfway lift, we can lift the arms up a little, straightening the legs a little, and then fingertips down. So this is a very gentle round. So plank here, and then knees down, chest, chin down. Elbows close. And tuck the toes down for a moment and relax the neck. Tuck the toes under again, power up through the core, belly sucked in, push up, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Bend the knees slightly and so we can walk the feet forwards, forward fold. Halfway lift. Rising up, upward salute. And then arms coming back through the centre line, down to attention, mountain pose. Arms up, upward salute. Arms forward and down to a forward fold. Fingertips down. Halfway lift, belly's tucked in. Fingertips down, opposite foot, left foot back first and then the other. Plank, knees, chest, chin down. Eight limb staff pose, untuck the toes. A low cobra here, the elbows are close. Relax the neck, tuck the toes under, and then push hips up and back. Feet can walk a little closer so we can get those heels down. Downward facing dog, then gently bend the knees to walk the feet towards the hands. Forward fold. Halfway lift, upward salute, greeting to the sun, and then the hands coming down past your heart to mountain pose, posture awareness, upward salute, forward fold. So we're going to move this on a bit. This time we can either keep the knees up in plank pose or bring them down again to make it kinder. So from here, elbows close, lowering the chest. This is our chaturanga. Toes up, untucked first and then tucked under to move to downward facing dog. Bending the knees, lightly bringing them down. Right foot steps forward, fingers and toes are aligned. Notice the ankle and knee are vertical to each other, lovely alignment there. And we lunge that back leg and bring it forward. Forward fold. Halfway lift. Upward salute, arms coming up, and then the hands coming back 
down past your heart. Mountain pose. Upward salute. Forward fold. Halfway lift. Left foot back and then the right and we're in our plank pose again. Knees can come down or stay up, keeping them up here and then lowering chaturanga. Untucking the toes, a low cobra here, and then powering up, upward facing dog. Toes tucked under to come to downward facing dog. Hips up and back, belly tucked in. And gently bringing the knees down. Left foot forwards, big toe lined up with the fingers. Lifting up the back knee, lunging here. Gazing ahead, powering that back foot forwards, forward fold. Halfway lift. And then the arms coming up, lovely. So that's warmed up some of the biggest muscles in our body. Hands coming to the heart, feel your heartbeat. Arms up, upward salute. Forward fold, fingertips down. Halfway lift. We're stepping right foot back, then left foot back. Plank pose here. Knees are going to come down so we can take the hips to the heels, extended child's pose. And then coming back to all fours, we're preparing for a pigeon pose here. Right knee comes forward and then we're going to cross that foot over to the other side. Reach the back foot further back, use the toes to help. And then we can use the hands for support here, staying upright or coming onto all fours into our pigeon pose here. And using the hands for support to come back upright here through a downward facing dog, hips up and back, knees gently down so we can go back Hips to heels, child's pose, just releases the back and the hips to all fours, opposite knee forwards, cross the foot over to the other side and inch the back leg, the knee back with the toes. So you can stay here if the hips are feeling a little bit tight, stay upright it feels good to go a little further down, you can come onto the forearms using the support of the forearms and even tuck that leg a little closer if that's a little better for you. If that's okay on the knees, then you can just let go. Use the hands coming back underneath the chest to power you back up through a downward facing dog to stretch those hamstrings, the back, bend the knees. And then step forwards, forward fold. Halfway lift. Upward salute. Mountain pose. We 
we're now going to be just really looking at the hands preparing for our eagle pose. You can just watch for a moment to get an idea of what the eagle arms will be like, so representing the beak of the eagle. So I've shown you one side, just about to show you the other side before we'll do it all again in a moment. So if you'd rather just have a hug when we come to eagle pose, you can cross arms over each other and just use that as your eagle part of the arms. And just remember which one was on top so that you can cross over and do the opposite side. And so now we're going to bend the knees and then move both arms over to your right. Take the right arm underneath so the elbows are stacked on top of each other and then see if the palms can meet. We might want to bring the legs a little closer together in our chair pose. And then right leg crosses over. You can just keep the toes on the ground or you can tuck that foot behind the opposite calf. This is our eagle pose. A little bit of core awareness and then release the legs, release the arms. Try on the other side. So both arms over to your left, the left arm and elbow underneath, backs of the hands together, or we can try and meet the palms together if there's space. So the knees are bent in our chair pose like posture, cross the left leg over, you can just balance on the toes or wrap the foot behind the opposite calf. Focus your gaze for balance. Then slowly release the legs, release the arms, hands to the heart. Do an upward salute, evening up the body here, left and right sides, forward fold, fingertips down. Halfway lift, through a chair pose, arms forwards. Powering up through those thighs. If it is better feet apart, you can do feet slightly apart. And then arms up to a fierce, powerful pose. Notice that zigzag shape of the body like a bolt of lightning. Powerful. And then we're going to do a lovely side to side to release the side body. Breath in guides us inwards. Breath out, guides us outwards. Finding your own flow. Just follow your breath, your rhythm. Don't worry about where I am. Side to side. One more to the other side. And then when we go over to the next side, we're going to hold the pose for a moment. Keep the breath flowing. Stretch through those upper fingers if that feels good. And maybe even gaze upwards just for a moment to release the neck and then down. Coming to the center, same again on the other side. Stretching through the fingers above, taking a little look above and then down as long as that feels good for the neck for you. Arms centered, clasping the fingers and lifting high. Feel that length through the spine. And hands to the heart. We're sideways on our mat now, so the knees turn out, the toes turn out, the arms are bent. Elbows together and then 
open the chest, squeeze the shoulders back and forwards. So it's a breath in as we open the chest and a breath out as we bring the elbows together. Breathing in, shoulder squeeze. Breathing out, belly squeezed. Hands down and straighten the legs up, taking them a little wider, clasping the fingers behind you and forward fold there to squeeze the shoulders a little more. Keep that breath awareness, bend the knees to lift the chest and then lower the arms down, arms are level. So just an awareness of the height of the arms, an awareness of the knee coming vertical to the ankle and then a little bit of an awareness on the other side in our warrior two poses. So we're centered with the toes forwards and now over to the right foot, knee vertical to ankle, warrior two pose. Arms are level, lovely. We might just check back and then lower right arm to thigh, left arm powers forward. And then the lower hand can reach fingertips down. Maybe we can even look up a little and then gracefully back to warrior two pose. Toes forwards and then over to the other side. Warrior two pose, arms level. Focused. And then bring the elbow to the thigh, back arm forwards and up. Side angle pose here. Lower hand can come down. And then gracefully upper hand down and back. Warrior two pose, we're upright here, arms level. Toes forwards. Hinging forwards at the hips, fingertips down, wide leg forward fold. Just noticing the breath. And grab hold of the shins or the ankles to bring the chest a little closer to the thighs, get a little deeper stretch into the hamstrings. And fingertips forwards, knees bend slightly to bring you back upright, arms level. Now I'm going to turn out right toes and lengthen the spine. One arm down in front of us and the other one up. Triangle pose. This is a really nice one for the back and the hips. You can always be a little bit more upright if that's better for you. So you don't have to reach the hand all the way down to the ground or the fingertips. And reaching, leaning, triangle pose. That awareness of breath. Arms level, we're upright, toes forwards. And then wide leg forward fold, centering the body left and right. Fingertips are gonna come down. Find the focus with the breath, flowing in through the nose, out through the nose. And then walk the hands forwards to bring the feet in, heel toe a little closer, but maybe a little wider than the hips. We come to a squat. And we're just testing that weight forwards, leaning forwards, lifting one foot up. Testing the hands, finding a good position, and then testing the other foot, lifting up. So that's our preparation for crow pose. And then 
You can just keep the toes grounded if that's where you'd like to be practicing. It's a good idea to have a pillow under your face. And bear in mind it might take two or three months before we can lift those feet up. Fun is in the practice. And the heels can come to touch. And just release through the back for a moment, through the arms, through the hands, pressing the hands down. So one tip about crow pose is when we were balancing with the feet off the ground is to be gazing a little bit forwards to help with the balance. Knees down. And since we've been taking flight with our pigeon and our eagle and our crow, let's ground ourselves in child's pose. Head can either be grounded, nice and calm on the forehead, or you could have one fist on top of the other to place the head on. Just grounding yourself here for a moment. And then coming upright, coming to seated. Here's our butterfly pose, soles of the feet together. And another moment to just let go. You can either just lower the head or with belly tucked in, hinge a little more forwards at the hips. Imagine the sun on your back, on your wings, if you're a butterfly. And then upright, right leg straight, left foot tucked into the thigh. This is half butterfly pose to stretch, arms up, lengthen the spine and then turn slightly towards the right leg, hinging at the hips. Finding a good place there for the back, so you, wherever suits you, you can be more upright if that feels better for the back, especially the lower back, and then coming upright. Lifting, lengthening, putting that length into the back again. Arms down. Swapping the legs over, half butterfly pose on this side. Notice how the toes are engaged, curling in a little towards you, fingers clasped, lifting, lengthening through the spine. Maybe another little stretch, lovely. And then turning torso towards left leg. Hinging forwards, arms come down. And just find the awareness of the breath. Coming upright. Releasing both legs forwards. And then take a little bend into the knees, coming to a caterpillar pose, forward fold here, putting some symmetry back into the body. So with our caterpillar pose, those knees can be bent a lot or a little. The more bent they are, the more protection you have for the back. Notice it's chest to thighs. We keep that awareness of chest coming towards the thighs, especially if we want to go a little deeper into this, straightening the legs a little more. We've still got that awareness of chest close to thighs, heart moving forwards, and then we can relax the neck.
So we're coming slowly upright, rolling on to your back to either keep the knees upright or it might be nice to bring the soles of the feet together and take the knees apart, one hand on the belly, the other hand on the chest. Just notice the breath, the rise and the fall of the belly and the chest. And we can draw right knee in towards us, cross that ankle over the opposite thigh. And gently draw the opposite knee towards you. And gently draw it in and then gently release it and then gently draw it in and then very slightly gently release it's a very gentle massaging like action here the feet are grounded so we can swap over to the other side so this is our reclining pigeon pose Just be mindful of the knees. If it's more comfortable to clasp the fingers around the thighs, do so. Otherwise, just be mindful to be drawing the knee in towards you rather than pushing or stressing the knee. Just gentle, lovely and down. And crossing the legs over to the other side and We've got eagle legs and eagle arms now, like we did when we were standing upright and we can draw their shoulders and head up and then slowly lower. Uncrossing the arms, uncrossing the legs. And over to the other side, crossing leg over the opposite thigh. If it feels good, tuck the foot behind the opposite calf and then cross the arms over. So this is our sleeping eagle. Or reclining eagle. Shoulders can lift, head can lift and then gently lower. And then release the arms down beside you, release the legs. Draw knees in towards you. Either just having a hug there or you can move the soles of the feet up to your happy baby pose. And just enjoying any last minute stretches you know are just right for you. Whether it's that hug or whether it's a happy baby pose. And then the feet can come down bring the fingers over the eyes and the thumbs lightly to the ears just symbolic of our five senses there sense of touch sense of sight the eyes hearing sense of smell our sense of taste deep breath in and we can imagine the sound of the humming bee as we slowly breathe out. You could even make the sound of the humming bee on the breath out. Breath in through the nose and a long breath out through the nose. And then release 
Place the hands down beside you. Coming to our relaxation here, our rest pose, our Shavasana. And choice is yours, legs straight or knees bent or maybe even in your reclining butterfly pose. Either way, find a place that feels good for you. using our imagination thinking about the humming bee flying from flower to flower the beautiful colors of the flowers warm day feeling that warmth of sunshine on the wings blue skies and the wonderful aroma of the flowers that you can busily buzz by And the sounds of the leaves and the trees gently windswept. And to your sense of smell, the flowers, the aromas. And even imagining the sweet taste of nectar, that taste of honey. From one flower to the next. An appreciation of sense of touch, feeling the warm sunshine, imagine warm sunshine on your body. Your sense of sight, blue skies. Your sense of hearing your sense of smell, your sense of taste, grateful for all your five senses. Namaste.